Hello everyone. In this demo, we are going to see how to write a simple C-sharp program and how to generate assemblies of both the kinds like EXE as well as DLL. Now, to write a simple C-sharp program, we can use any text editor like in our uh, Java we use uh, Notepad. In the same way here, we can use any kind of text editor. Now, I am using Notepad. Now, every C-sharp program will start with a class class and class name class name as my first program open bracket close bracket now this is what a class is the name of the class is my first program now every class should contain a main method like C contains main method from where the program execution starts C++ also contains main method in the same way here it should uh, here we should write public static void main as C sharp is case sensitive so main method M should be in caps rest in small now what is public what is static what is void what is main all these things we will see in our future videos but as of now you can think that this is what the structure of a program now concentrate on this part from here till here now I want to display a simple message so to display a simple message what is that I will do I will write console dot right line so console is a class and right line is a method which is used to print something in C sharp like uh, in C we use printf and in C++ we use C out in the same way in C sharp if I want to print something I'll be using console dot right line console dot right line bracket start in quotation I'll write welcome to Macwin. Fine. Now, the definition of this class and the method is available in a namespace called as system. Like uh, we can uh, assume that you know these namespaces are similar to your header files that we included in our uh, C programs, like hash include stdio.h, hash include conio.h. Uh, like in Java, we used to import packages in the same way I need to use a namespace called as system with the help of keyword using using system so the system is nothing but it is a namespace which contains the definition of the classes which we are using in our program it is going to execute console dot right line that means it is going to execute this method right line from the classes which are available in the system namespace so this is our simple program now I am going to save this program save as so I am going to save it in the C sharp folder which is uh, there in e colon ms dot net C sharp folder I'm going to save this program as test.cs. So CS is the extension for C sharp program. Like our C program has an extension of .c and C++ program has an extension of .cpp. Java program has an extension of .java. In the same way, every C sharp file will have an extension of .cs. So I'm going to save this. Now, before I execute this program, I need to compile this. So to compile, I have a command prompt. I need to go to the command prompt, uh, which is uh, available with my Visual Studio 2008. So if I install Visual Studio on my system, so automatically I will get a command prompt. So I need to go a pro uh, from programs to Visual Studio 2008, from there Visual Studio tools, and then you'll come to the command prompt, Visual Studio 2008 command prompt. And I'm going to run this Visual Studio 2008 command prompt. Now my 
C sharp file is present in a directory called as uh, C sharp. Uh, so that is there in the E colon. So I need to go to that particular file E colon. CD space Microsoft dot net slash C sharp. So if I write dir, then you can see the file. So s dot cs is available here. Now. I need to compile this to compile a C sharp file. I have a C sharp compiler. The C sharp compiler is nothing but CSC. C sharp compiler is CSC. So I'm going to compile with the help of C sharp compiler. So I'll write CSC space the file name. Now, uh, once I press enter and if my cursor comes on the command prompt silently, and uh, then I can think that it has been compiled successfully and it is going to generate the assembly and it is going to generate exe as we have seen there are two kinds of assemblies exe and there is dll now my program has compiled successfully now if i write dir then you can see an exe here so this is what the exe is this is what the exe now if i want to run this program then i'll just write test.exe so it has executed as test.exe. As I told you, every assembly contains two things. One is manifest and there is metadata. A manifest file contains the information about the assembly and metadata file contains information about the classes which are present in that particular assembly. Now we can peep into this assembly. What does this assembly contain? We can see that with the help of a tool called as IL, Intermediate Language disassembler TASM now I am going to browse that particular exe open now this is what my exe is now I will select this I will say open see you can see that this is what the manifest file and this is what the program uh, metadata file which is nothing but a class now my program contains a single class so there is a single metadata file if my program contains multiple classes I will definitely have multiple metadata files. Now let us see what does this manifest file contain. Manifest file which contains information about the assembly. It says that you know this assembly is uh, uh, something it is an exe and it contains uh, you know some information which is not uh, uh, very important for us as of now to see and the, this is what the information about the assembly and if we see this this contains information about the class. We have written one method called as main method. This main method, see that in this, this is what your intermediate language is. You can see that dot entry point. It means that you know the your program is going to execute from your main method. Now this is what the string that we are going to uh, you know display. And we have used console right line method. This method is present in system namespace right so uh, these are the internals anyway we do not uh, need to dig a lot into this just uh, to see what actually an intermediate language is so we have seen this as my program contains a single class we have a single metadata file if I write multiple classes definitely I will have multiple metadata files so we can demonstrate even that so to demonstrate, I'll uh, simply write uh, one more class here. Student. That's it. I'm not going to implement anything in this class. Just I'll save this. I'm going to compile this again. I need to recompile this. If I recompile, now if I say ILDASM, and if I open this, now you'll see two metadata files see that one is this which contains the main method other is student it does not contain any method so if i have two classes i'll have two metadata files if i have multiple classes then i'll have multiple metadata files a single class single metadata file but manifest file will be one and only one for particular assembly so this is all about your exe now how do I generate DLL? 
so in our earlier classes uh, we have discussed about the differences between exe and dll uh, so i'll give a, a, a small definition uh, once again exe is nothing but uh, executable file exe is an executable file a standalone executable file dll is a reusable component that means you cannot execute it directly it needs some other application to instantiate it now we will see how to generate a dll to generate a dll we need to use the same compiler csc now you need to uh, write a different command here slash forward slash t colon library and my file name file name is nothing but test.cs now see that it has uh, come on the command prompt silently now if I write dir, you can find a dll. See this test.dll. Now, again, I'll see what does this dll contain. It contains the exact same things what an exe contains, but except an entry point. Because I told you we cannot execute a dll directly. So I'll write il intermediate disassembler. Now I'm going to open that particular uh, dll that again it contains manifest metadata everything same but if you see this main method it does not contain an entry point a uh, same thing uh, if I open an exe it contains an entry point whereas DLL does not contain any entry point If I take the DLL, you can see everything is same except entry point. You can see that it does not contain entry point and manifest in manifest you can see that this module is a DLL. Hope uh, you have understood what uh, actually an EXE is and DLL. Uh, again in our uh, future classes we are going to build DLLs and we will see how to Re how to make these DLLs reusable and all those things we will see in our further classes. So that's it for the day. Thank you.